Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a quick update on my experience with the Sony GP VPT 2BT. This is a Bluetooth grip designed for Sony E mount and Cybershot cameras. It retails for $140 US dollars, and I've spent a day and change with it. And I have to say, it is a great accessory if your camera supports it, and that's pretty much the catch. The A7R4 that I have here with my Power Zoom 28 to 135 works seamlessly. In fact, I think this is a uh, best case scenario for this uh, device, the grip that's right here, because you literally have a nearly perfect run and gun setup for hybrid shooting, both still and video. Uh, the shotgun mic I love, and now this really just completes it. Now this payload is a little bit beyond the, uh, it's a little bit over three pound capacity that Sony rates this grip at, so bear that in mind. And if you do not uh, have it positioned properly when you flip out the tripod mode, it will topple over. So if I were to leave it like that, it's going over. I mean, common sense prevails. So if you angle it up, you're fine. And then keep in mind that at least in my experience, you're better off having it angled up because when you're shooting, at least with this combination, you're gonna want the grip like this. And I would brace the lens because as I mentioned, this is a little bit heavier uh, than the average setup. So uh, what is a lighter setup? Probably the F4 24 to 105 G lens uh, that I had on it the other day and what I'm gonna do now is just take you through quickly the actual setup of pairing because I have paired it or I've tried pairing it with a multitude of cameras and unfortunately this grip is only really going to work with Sony's latest gen. So the A7R4, the A6600, uh, the A6100, um, I believe it's, it's going to work with the 6400. Anything pretty much that came out in 2019 or now is going to come out in the future, I believe this will work with, but older cameras like my RX100 5, 6, A6500, 6300, RX10.4, Bluetooth connectivity is there, but the option to control using a remote is not. So let's hope that Sony pushes out a firmware update because for $140, it would be nice if this worked with everything. And on the flip side, I wish Sony would have at least put in a wired connection like they had on their previous gen that I have right here. Uh, at the same time, I don't really think this is ideal for an RX100 style camera because it's huge. So while it works with the RX100 Mark 7, and yes, it's nice to have wireless connectivity, I still would recommend this because this can fit in your pocket. This is getting a little bit large. So look, Sony puts what I believe is the A6600 on the box, and that makes sense because that's probably the best camera for this grip. But as I've already mentioned, I happen to like this a lot, even though it does get heavy. So let's get into pairing. Go ahead and power it on. You jump into the menu, and I'm gonna try to give you as uh, close a view of this as possible. It's very simple. Um, essentially, you're just going into network settings, and let me go ahead and get this closer to the camera. Once you're at network settings, you're gonna go ahead and go to Bluetooth. Now, Bluetooth is on, but we need to pair. So, it's performing pairing, so all you have to do is go to the remote, and you're going to hold down T, and photo for seven seconds until that red light blinks, the LED, and we should have it. And you can already see the camera is now requesting uh, permission to pair, and that's it. Once this is done, you do have to take another step, which is, I'll go ahead and jump back, but I, I believe it should already be done, which is inside the uh, network menu, you can see we have Bluetooth remote control. This by default will be set to off, so you're going to want to turn that on. Mine is on because I've already paired this in the past, and that was part of obviously the process of testing it with all of these cameras. And even though they have Bluetooth, the only other one that I have working here, unfortunately, again, is the A6100. Uh, but the beauty of this setup, as I was mentioning, and you can just use this as a wireless remote, although God help you if you're buying it just for that, uh, is that not only can you control photo and video capture, but zoom capability. Now, I had wondered whether or not this would be able to control this, and the good news is, it does. So, you can see I'm taking a still photo. Video capture, I don't have an SD card in there, but rest assured it works. But here's the beauty. If I want to zoom, we are zooming. Now, I know I don't have a great subject there, so what I'll do is I'll reattach it, and I will go ahead and just show you one subject and you know again overall i wish they had a hardwired 
uh, port on this because that would just be a game changer for this. But overall, I like the build. I like that it's more weather resistant or resilient than the previous generation. Those are all really good things. And I could just see in the times where I don't want to use a gimbal, uh, you know, and that's really just a matter of convenience and wanting to be able to get the shot rather than miss it. Uh, this is a great solution. So there is my RX-10 Mark IV, and I'm going to go ahead, let me flip up the display so you can actually see what I'm filming here. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. So let's do that right now. We're a little too close to achieve uh, focus, but I think you get the idea. That's just a limitation. It's like once I get to 100 mil, forget it. I can still achieve at 87, but if you have clear image on digital, you can go all the way. Now, I only have clear image because I don't believe in the digital. I think the clear is a nice reach, especially when you have a camera like this. Uh, so this is great. I mean, I absolutely think this is a use case scenario that warrants picking up this grip. But if I didn't own this camera, my tune would be very different because as I mentioned earlier, it does not work with anything else that surrounds this little filmmaking dynamo that I have. So if I didn't own this, um, I would not be probably doling out the praise that I am because I wouldn't be able to use it. Uh, and that's why I've stated, I wish that Sony had given us a hardwired port. Now there's hope that the, a firmware update will come because I don't think that it's a big deal considering Bluetooth functionality is on board all of these cameras. Literally every single one, well, not every single one, but the majority of them do have Bluetooth. Um, I'm not sure that the 6300, it may only have Wi-Fi connectivity, but I know that uh, the, and the RX100 Mark V, I don't think has it, but the Mark VI has it, the RX10 has it. Uh, you know what, the, the 63 and 65 may have it too. I mean, I went through it already. It's just not there in terms of a remote control feature. So hopefully they do something, but other things that you should know in terms of control, not only does, obviously this button gives you the flexibility to move this, um, not 180 degrees, but close to it, just about really 180. But then what you also have with this button is the ab ability to flip the camera around and it locks in. But again, if your payload is really heavy, you know, be mindful. This is probably about as heavy as anything's going to get because you don't really want to put a telephoto, a true telephoto, like a 200 uh, to 600, or I have the G Master 100 to 400. I mean, I could put it on here. Um, it's pretty much about the same weight as this lens. But the reason, the only reason I would put this lens on this camera is because I will have actual control of the zoom since it's a power zoom, which is fairly limited in Sony's full frame lineup. Now, on the other hand, uh, if you were to just keep on you know, a lens like the F4, the 28, uh, excuse me, 24 to 105, which I think is a great pairing that does make the weight on this setup, and I do think is a good one, uh, that zoom rocker is only going to work for uh, clear image or digital zoom because, of course, the zoom is manual. It is not a power zoom like this. So, again, I think right here, what I've been working with is great with the A7R4 and the power zoom uh, 28 to 135, especially when you throw this little guy in, but I can't justify it for an RX100 Mark VII. And it is fairly large, even for an A6600 or the A6100. I'll give you a look at what that looks like on there. I mean, it all depends how badly you need this wireless uh, control. And while I could tell you it's a good substitution for a gimbal, it's not really a substitution for a gimbal. I think it's more about run and gun capability and that it absolutely provides um, you know and again pairing is simple I showed you all what that process is it is not complicated I think this is clearly something they designed for vlogging uh, to be a nice counterpart to all of the new cameras that support the flip around display and I think that's what you really have to ask yourself you know are you do you own a camera with a flip around display because in all likelihood as long as that's not an rx100 then it's going to work and this is definitely a lot more lightweight i mean if i owned an a6600 i absolutely would buy one of these um, because i mean once you put an aps-c camera like this on here it is not going to get heavy on you you're going to get more stability than you would hand holding alone 
and the wireless controls plus the tripod are just a no-brainer. So I like this setup a lot. Who knows, one day I may pick up an A6600. I do like that camera a lot. I just can't justify it in my own personal setup as of right now, uh, since I do have enough cameras for an army. But I think the grip is obviously an instant buy if you have a camera that supports it and you see yourself using it. On the other hand, there's still this little ditty if you want to save some cash and have nearly universal capability because the wired cable does work with every single camera I have here, but clearly this is not as robust. Um, the flex is worse, but everything else is kind of the same. I mean, the only difference is that this, the, the wireless, which is the biggest selling point, does have the C1 button and a lock, uh, but you know the C1 is customizable. It will essentially just reflect whatever you have customized on your C button on your camera. So that's a nice thing um, if you want a quick setting, quick adjustment. But otherwise, I just wish they had put a wired connection on this. If they did, I wouldn't be talking about all the cameras that you see here not working. But overall, it's a solid accessory for $140, especially if you've invested you know, $2,000 in an interchangeable lens and camera body and want to take it another step in terms of creativity, flexibility. And I don't think it's just for vlogging, but yes, it absolutely uh, serves that purpose because you have all of the adjustments that you can make here um, in changing, you know, angles, orientation, and that's all nice stuff. So kudos to Sony. It needs a little more refinement or at least start pushing out firmware so that cameras that do have Bluetooth can take advantage of it. Any questions or comments? Please feel free to post them, hit that like button, and as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.